Hello everyone. Good evening. It is Sunday, September 11th, 2022. Football season is here, everyone. That's just a side note. It doesn't have to do what we're streaming tonight, but it's back. That's pretty fun. And um, thanks everyone for being here, Who everyone who is here. I'm just going to check to see if the chat is working. Wait, this chat should work in both. Both places that I'm streaming. So I'm going to test, test the chat. Hey, Odinson, what's up? Welcome. There we go. Okay, so um, welcome everyone. Hey, Denik, what's up? Welcome to chat. Um, hop on over on Twitch if you'd like. Uh, I should put that in here. Uh, my Twitch account. Noob Coder, what's up? AO Jake Programming. How are you guys doing tonight? What's new, everyone? Let's find out my 6.55 a.m. in India, you guys are saying. Nice. Nice and early morning. Are you ready to get after the week? It's Monday. It's Monday for you guys. Still Sunday night here. Let's find the Twitch stream. Ah. 8.25 where you are, Jake. It is 9.25 where I am. 9.25 p.m. Okay, I think I found it. Hopefully I've got myself muted. No, I don't, but now I do. Are the vo volumes and everything okay? So I put the link to Twitch if you're watching on another platform. Come on over and join us in that chat. Um, so I thought today it would be kind of fun to talk about something that just ended and something that I worked on recently um, a Kaggle competition that was really fun. And I, so here's the deal. I haven't really prepared any sort of uh, solution to discuss, but I think that we can, we can just jump into it. Uh, it was the DEF CON 2022 conference capture the flag event. Hey, Hydrin Campy, what's up? Welcome. Jake Programming, do you, did you get the last piece? No, I didn't. No one did. No one did. So here are the final standings. 676 teams were in this. And I ended up in 11th place. So here's the deal. It all came down to the last, the hardest problem or flag to capture in this. I guess the second hardest, the hardest no one got. But the second hardest took me... A lot longer than it should have and if you got that one then you were golden but I was spending so long trying to figure this one out it's it was a sloth one and we're gonna I'm gonna show you guys what it was um, my score is the same as the first yeah so this is this competition was somewhat unique you're solving um, little mini problems that they give you that are related to hacking AI so I can show you guys what they mean. But as soon as you solve one, you get a certain number of points and you update your score and you, like everyone will jump in big chunks basically and get to the same numbers because they're all each solving different. So you could think of it like there were 22 problems and they were each weighted differently, but basically you're just trying to check off all of these 22 and whoever can check them off first gets in first place 21 of the 22 were solved by most of the top people i'm surprised it went all the way down to 34th with people solving it um but yeah it was kind of about speed more than anything so first did it faster yes that's correct jake programming so i was i started like three days after the competition started I still, I, I was up there in the top five. I really want, I mean, 
the main goal is to get top five because there are no medals or um, Kaggle points awarded for this competition. So it's basically like if you get in the top five, then you get some money. What was the, what was the payout? 25 K total. So all the top five people each got 5,000 bucks. And I really thought maybe I had a chance there for a while until I got stuck on this one. And I also was like jumping back and forth between the top two um, or the last two uh, things that we had to solve. So anyways, let me show you guys what it looked like, what the competition was like. And this is my super mess. We're going to jump into my super messy. Um, GitHub repo where my code was just all over the place, but we, you know, this is real life. I haven't, I haven't dolled any of this up for you guys. So let's go ahead and go to, and it was really fun. It was a really fun competition though. I um, definitely recommend it. It looks like they may come out with another one next year. So definitely jump on that. It reminded me a lot of usually a Christmas time Kaggle launches like a Santa related competition that's usually optimization focused. And this reminded me a lot of that because with those, not necessarily, but most times there's an optimal solution that everyone is trying to reach. And it's almost like a, a race more so than like slowly building your model to be better than everyone else's. It's just like whoever can get the optimal solution, the fastest wins. Um, I haven't touched most of this code in a while, but I'll show you what I think I had. Oh man, I was working on so many of these ideas. Getting started copy one. Maybe this is a good one to start with. Uh, no, this is when I was working on crop. All right, maybe I should load it up in the actual notebook. The other cool thing about this competition that kind of makes it unique was the fact that you were forced to work alone. There were no teams allowed, so you knew you were just competing against other people directly. Um, that was kind of unique because usually in Kaggle competitions, it's like teams are usually at least small teams are allowed. Um, in this one, there were no teams allowed. The second thing was the fact that, yeah, you had these different steps in the process that weren't necessarily related that you were trying to solve these different problems. So um, the first ones also sucked you in. So they made you think that it was super easy and then they got a lot harder from there well you didn't know but hopefully yeah i guess i guess other people could have worked in teams but uh hopefully not um so all of them were supposed to be related to machine learning and hacking machine learning as you guys probably know defcon is like the big hacker conference so they're all hacking related but the other cool thing was um you actually weren't submitting your solution each time you hit submit. You were submitting a flag, which you would receive by sending your actual solution to um, like an endpoint, this, this URL. And if you had the correct solution, it would give you a key. And the key is just, the key is just a, a string of characters. I think this is my version. So these are my, like when I just got started. So the first problem was this, you have, um, yeah, this one was super easy. So this was, um, this is Chester. He's heard of hot dog, not hot dog, but really wants to be classified as a hot dog. So, there is a endpoint where you can send URLs and it would tell you what type of dog it was with some sort of confidence. And they wanted you to classify him as a hot dog. So this was super easy. You just sent to this URL a picture of a hot dog. 
Sometimes I wish I didn't hate InfoSec so much. People do it on leak noise. What do people do on leak code? Cheat? Work together when they're not supposed to? Eh, there's always gonna be some of that. But the, the truth will come to light eventually, right? So this one was super easy. I wanna find my, where's my solutions? Where's my solutions? I thought they, these ones had them. No, this is just a notebook I was working on. I could have sworn I have my solutions in a notebook. Yeah, this one getting started. Yeah, so okay, so here's here's my solution to the hot dog one. I just basically did a, a W get on this hot dog picture of these hot dogs. They're only cheating themselves. Why even bother bother when the hopeful to do it is to learn. Yeah, I guess because there's ways to um to get ahead by cheating. But yeah, it's not worth it in the end, like you said. People have done it on Kaggle too. Like there are websites where people say, um, like they'll get you gold medals. They'll, they'll, if you pay them a certain number of money, um, amount of money, they'll get you a gold medal on Kaggle, which is crazy. Cause I guess it's more than egos, right? It's more than just uh, egos. It's like, you can get job opportunities and that sort of stuff. Hey, Zombie Foo, welcome to the family. We're going over my solution to this competition. Um, let's actually also give you guys a link to this bad boy in chat in case people want to go to that and check it out. I wish I could get job opportunities. Well, maybe, maybe that's why people cheat on stuff like this. But like who actually cares about that? I that doubt people use that in job interviews. Just like hack the box or whatever. Yeah, sorry, you could be okay. You could be right. I don't know. Why would you want it for your ego then? If you know that you're just cheating. But, but I seem to lack any marketable skills. Hey, you're watching good Twitch channel to learn some skills. Yeah, I think leak code matters for software engineers, right? So anyways, this is the competition that I'm going through the solutions for, or my solutions for. Yeah, so this is what the, so what would happen is if you get the correct response from the URL that you send it to, you get these this sort of message, which is the flag. So I start salivating just seeing this flag because these are the things I was, I'd be working on these problems for like eight hours and then finally get the solution. You get this thing and it's like, yay, that's so awesome. Why do people cheat in video games? I don't know. I was trying to cheat in Elden Ring to level up early, but there's no easy way to real cheat. You just have to, you just have to grind at it. Why are you sad, Lopta? You'll get it. You got to keep working at it. Don't be sad. If it didn't hurt, then it wouldn't matter. Well, it, the fact that it hurts means that it matters, right? All right. So this was, maybe I should edit this. This was the, the next real question. So they gave us these three cluster NumPy files and the key is the number of clusters in order with no spaces so you need to find out of these numpy files what how many clusters were there actually in them let me run this code i don't know if the endpoints actually work still Don't go away, Lopta. Hey, what's going on, David J? Welcome. Zombie Foo, you saw my newbie pandas coding and decided to stop in. Nice, that's awesome. I'm glad you saw it. Yeah, I hope that YouTube video gets uh, gets some traction. Exclamation for everyone in Twitch! Exclamation YouTube. 
will bring you up the link to my YouTube and it'll bring you here. You can check out that video that uh, Zombie Foo was talking about, 25 newbie pandas mistakes. I was heavily inspired by um, M coding similar video on, he, he did some on uh, Python, like 25 newbie habits for Python. So I thought it would be a good, uh, fun idea to try to make one for uh, pandas. And that's what this video is. So if you code in pandas, Python, and you wanna get better, check out this video after the stream. And Lopta, I feel bad. Why are you saying you're gonna go away and stuff? I hope you're not really sad. Um, yeah, so we got the flag on this one. This one, okay, so if you were given a bunch of NumPy, I'm just asking you guys in chat. If you were given a bunch of NumPy arrays and asked to figure out how many clusters in them were there were, how would you find this out? Actually, let's do this. I'll show you my solution. So this is the solution. Um, basically, you load this in. I'm trying to remember what I did. Oh, I made a heat map of it so I could sort of visualize if there were any clear clusters in them. So this was the first one. This is num clusters one. And it's not very clear here, the number of clusters. But all I basically did, and this is pretty standard in, in clustering, is I ran a k-means cluster from the number two, which would be the minimum number of clusters, to uh, the shape of this. So the most amount of clusters there could be is that every single observation in this data set is its own cluster. Then I fit a model on that, and then I print this print it this inertia. Let's look at the inertia. Yeah, so this is a sum of squared distances of the sample to their closest cluster center. So I figured this metric would have a clear drop off when the clusters we're no longer, when we started re reaching an optimum number of clusters. And you can sort of see that here. Um, oh, I also did this this plot, which you, you usually use when you're doing k-means clustering to find like the optimal cluster point. You look for an elbow where like this error metric stops becoming less the more clusters that you add. Um, and you can sort of see it here too. Let me see here. Yeah, look, the the inertia was like 32,000, then 16,000, 7,000, then it jumped way down to 300. It's kind of like the optimal number of clusters. Uh, this one, what was this one too? And the interesting thing with this too is you could sort of try as many submissions as you wanted. So I could have brute forced this and I actually did brute force some of the solutions in this competition or one of the solutions because I couldn't figure it out. And you could just send this endpoint as many attempts at the solution as you want until you get the right answer. And that's totally within bounds of the solution. Uh, what else do we have? Math too. So this was, they were asking the dimensionality of this. And the, I got confused because it's like dimensionality, that's just like the shape of this NumPy array. Is, that, is it that simple? But they're actually ask, asking about like the number of components. Like if you broke this down into components, how many would there be? 
Um, so I did, I fit principal component analysis on each of these. And then I used this explained variance ratio, very similar to the last one, to sort of find a point when this error metrics reached an optimum. So you would think that as you in increase the number of components, you reach this point where the explained variance ratio stops to improve. Ah, where am I going to it? Uh, and that's just what I found here. So these, these first ones were pretty easy. Yeah, so you can sort of see the explained variance ratio. What, what else did I print here? Yeah, so this is the number of components and then the explained variance ratio of each. And then it was pretty simple from there. Just submitting three, five, four. This one stopped at four. After four, like the explained variance, like, started to tank and same thing here after five any questions i don't know if this is if anyone's getting anything out of this uh the third one these math ones were were all pretty straightforward um what's the dimensionality of the data in second dimension one and two and three I think I just did the same thing as two. I don't know. It's been like a month since I did all these problems. This one was a little tricky, I think. 474. I don't know. It worked. Then there's a math challenge four. What's the dimensionality in clusters one? Okay, so this was the... I think I just did the same thing. So in this one, I just looped through each of these cluster ones and looked for when the explained variance dropped off. So you can see here that like this one was five, five, four, three, one, two, like that ended up being the solution. PCA, principal component analysis. Do you compete in CTFs? regularly no this was the first one i had ever worked on i had never i didn't even know they existed before this but the, then i started looking into them they were really fun so let's get into this more interesting one this wi-fi one you what was this this one had me confused at first you really need to check your email unfortunately you don't know the password fortunately someone wrote it down unfortunately it's written down in a low dimensional manifold embedding a very high dimensional space check the wi-fi embedding characters how did i solve this one yeah so this had basically is a numpy array with these tokens and what was this items Yeah, I don't think I solved this one in here. I think I solved this one later on. Man, my memory is so bad. I must have solved it in there then. Because I totally forget how I solved the Wi-Fi one. I clearly didn't solve it in this notebook.
Now my brain's just trying to remember. <laughs> this one time I went to DEF CON and met this guy, Kevin Mitznick, who is out giving business cards and took pics with them. I don't know, but I tried open doors with them immediately and got arrested. What? I will upload the recording of this video on YouTube. Yeah, I'm streaming it right now to YouTube as well as Twitch. But the problem is like, this is a very bad solution <laughs> walkthrough because I haven't even thought through. Like I totally forget some of these. I don't even know where in all these million of notebooks I was working on, where I solved the Wi-Fi problem. Maybe it's in this one. No, this is where the one I worked on crop. So there's like getting started. Wi-Fi, is there any Wi-Fi solutions? No. We're looking for, oh, I started to date them. That's what I did. I started to date these. I did like August 12th was when I was working on August 12th. Any recommendations for learning code, YouTube, online, um, in-person classes? I always recommend taking this. Um, so if you watch my YouTube video on how to get started in data science, I recommend this specific uh, course for learning Python at first which is good. It's like a MIT score course on edX. That one I would start with if you want to learn Python. Come on. Does this have the solution? Now I'm going to just start loading up all these notebooks, trying to find where I solved that one. Let's talk about the exciting ones. Kevin Mitnick is a top G. What did he do? Who's this guy? Kevin Mitnick. Is he like the top hacker? He's an American computer security consultant, author, and convicted hacker. He was convicted? He's best known for his high profile 1995 arrest and five years in prison for various computer and communications related crimes. Everything about him is controversial. So you met this guy in real life? And he gave you his card and then you got arrested because of it? And now he does security training videos. I mean, he has, that's the thing. All the really good hackers can make a lot of money just by, um, by like solving exploit, uh, what are they called? When you, when you're able to exploit companies websites they'll give you money for it won't they oh man i swear i can't find my um my solution to this wi-fi one all right we'll have to come back to that one Okay, so after that was, after Wi-Fi was Hotter Dog. This one took me forever. So Hotter Dog was basically 
Um, you had this picture of Chester still. The same old Chester as before. This guy, but you wanted to submit this. You had to submit this to a machine learning algorithm and have it classify as a hot dog. But the problem here is you can't, you couldn't just modify this picture to be a hot dog. You had to, um, if you changed it too much, then the response from the endpoint would say that, no, you modified this, something's up here. So there is a trick to doing this that I applied that actually, I figured out after I solved a later problem in this set. Now his business card had a lock pick stuff and that you could pop up and I was like, I got this. Oh, so you, you used his business card to commit a felony? <laughs> Meme clear, Bams. You're gonna get us all in trouble. That is hilarious. Um, this honor student one was pretty easy. So basically you had an F here and you wanted to make it look like um, an A. So you, so there's a machine learning algorithm that took this little F and determined if you had modified it. So there's like a common theme here. Trying to trick machine learning algorithms while also not changing the image or the input to the machine learning algorithm enough that it's obvious to anyone looking at it that you modified it. So both the hotter dog and this honor student one were that. And basically how I solved it with this one was just by uh, just going into a paint program and modifying it ever so slightly until I got an, it to look like an A. I wish I had the image. Hey, welcome to the family, Aka. How are you doing? Some sort of adversarial ML, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so this is the F, right? And I wanted to change it into, oh, I think this was a B. I think what happened was if I tried to make it an A, it would knew something was up. And this B here, do you guys see this B? That ended up working. And I don't know where that file is now. You can see here, I got the, the answer to that. Secret Sloth, this one for days and days, this is the one that killed me. The stupid Secret Sloth is basically just this picture of a sloth and you're trying to find the hidden message in it. And I could have sworn I tried every single way of solving this possible and the Ending solution was actually super simple. Hey, Portugal, welcome to the family. How are you doing? We're talking about um, the solution to this hacking competition, or my solution, my very not organized, organized solution. Um, so let's talk about sloth. Or maybe I should save talking about sloth since that one is the last one I solved. But basically this picture of this sloth, I looked at so much. So, um, and I try to find out the solution. There are so many ways you can hide information in an image I didn't know about before. And uh, after this competition, I figured I learned about a lot of them by trying to apply them to this image. Like the main ways are you do something with the last bit or two bits of each pixel value. So as you guys probably know, in each uh, in an image, there's actually three different pixel values for red, green, and blue for each of those pixels. And they're usually scaled between one and 255 as an integer. 
And if you convert that into binary, it's just a bunch of one and zeros, right? A bunch of bits. And if you modify those last bits, it doesn't really change what you can see in the image too much. So let's look at this up on YouTube. Um, I'm, I'm not doing it justice, but it's called stenography, right? So this is a YouTube video that kind of explains it a lot better than I'm doing right now. But every pixel is basically ones and zeros representing it. And this, this, um, these ones and zeros tell us how intense the red, green, or blue should be on that. Yeah, so you've done this for class, yeah. So I thought this was the solution to it, at least for a while, until I realized it, it had nothing to do with that. Should I just get into the sloth more? So I tried every single possible way, and the problem with trying to decode this is like there are a lot of different um, ways that the person could have chose to hit in their flag or their hidden message. They could have hit it in this last digit, this last bit for red, green, or blue, or all three. Or they could have used the last two bits and there's actually, um, there's actually this software that I found that act, will f do this all for you. It's called Zsteg, and it's pretty awesome. Um, even though I didn't end up actually needing it for this, but I used this on this image to try. It basically tries every single iteration of um, which channels bits to use, which order to put them in. That's another thing. Like it could be red, green, or blue, or the, I guess the alpha channel. It could just be like three of the channels. It could be three digits from three bits from each channel. And this will let you, this software will let you run all these checks on any image. And if you give it all these different channels, it'll test them all. So I just basically running stuff like this. Um, let's open this. Oh, here's the other thing. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you this later. But, um, so here's the secret sloth, right? I was trying all the crazy stuff like this too. You can also hide images within images. Um, so by using zsteg, we could just do zsteg at zsteg file name. Let's do secret sloth.png. See that just by default just tries a few different of the, the main way, ways to look for these bits at the end of the at the end of the file, but I think if we do A for all, then it starts trying all these different iterations. So you can decide it might not be able to see here on the left side, but this is like four bits, blue, green, red is the order. And then most significant bit, which actually would be pretty odd to see it that way, but that would be to see the first bit is the one where the information is hidden. And then X, Y means like the order in which you're going, because remember, this is like a, a image that's like a grid. So you could go from left to right and then down, or you could go top to bottom. Like it could be like lines that way. Hey, by the way, thanks. Welcome to the family. Who do we have there? Uh, head ringer, new, f new follower. Welcome to the family. Let me know in chat how you found the stream. Yeah. So a lot of this stuff, was driving me bonkers, absolute bonkers. Um, what else did I do? Sloth forever. I made all these notebooks just like trying to grind away at it. 
um, pictures of like just the red channel, just the green channel, just the blue one. Basically like 50% of this competition was just staring at the sloth. And one of the most frustrating parts about it was I found, and I'm sure a lot of people did, found the original image of this sloth. And it was from a Reddit post nine years ago. So I was confident that no one hit a message in it nine years ago and then used it in this competition. Um, so when I diff, when you diff those, oh, why well, I'm on here. When you looked at the difference between the original one and the one they provided, there was clearly something going on in a strip of the image towards the bottom. So I did a lot of this. You could kind of see it here uh, in the bottom of the image, right here where it's kind of blurry. And I did a lot here. You could see it clear when, when you do a diff here. Like there's clearly a difference right here. There's something going on. And I was convinced that this is where the bits were hidden of information in the sloth image. And it was incorrect because, well, it was where the information was hidden, but it was not hit, hidden in those last bits like I had been searching um, or spend so much time searching. I was trying, so I was also convinced at a certain point that maybe it was you know, looking at the difference between the original image and the one that they gave us and doing some sort of like normalizing would help us figure it out. Cause it kind of looks like you could read text in this if you really zoom into that area where this text is. And I did a lot of that. I did a lot of zooming in, trying to see if I could read what was here. And then eventually, yeah, this is all the stuff where I was looking at the last bit. So I, I, I didn't even want to believe that this uh, Z-Steg was doing it correctly. So I was like doing it manually, checking each last bit. Because when you're checking each bit, then you have to join them together and see if they, um, if they actually uh, make the text that you're looking for. And what we knew we were looking for in this competition was, was the word flag, F-L-A-G, before they would, like before the actual flag that we were searching for. And that meant I was looking for this, these bits in this order, right? Uh, this would be F, L, and A. So I basically had to run all these different checks each time and see if I could find them. Uh, could find the flag in that text and it never came through. Look at all these ideas I tried. This is just one of like 20 notebooks that I made on this thing. This was just horrendous. Um, then someone on the forums, one of the hosts said something about how it, it used signal processing and the, the final solution ended up being this. After all of this work, and granted, this is one of many notebooks that I, I worked on with this stupid sloth. Let's see another one of these sloth ones. It's not gonna wanna load. I don't know why everything's so sluggish today. Let's see the last one that ended up working. It ended up just being that that text there was a four year transform. So if you apply the four year transform to this image, um, where do I actually get the solution. So let's see if we could actually do the solution here. The solution was uh, just a few liners. Um, import pand uh, numpy. And then 
Let's read this image. Uh, let's import CV2. CV2 I am read. So NumPy has signal. NumPy FFT for fast Fourier transform. Was that SciPy? Yeah, NumPy to FFT, FFT. So, um, let's also invert this. last channel so if i do i am show of this sloth that's him that's the guy if i do the fast fourier transform and i do absolute value of this now that's not working what was it fast fourier transform Where is it? Oh, was it fast for FFT2? Now I can't even recreate what I created. Maybe it's just the real part of this. Some people are doing it like this. It looks like one guy did it like this. There we go. You can kind of see it there. Man, you know it's hard when I can't even recreate it and I, I was able to figure it out in the actual competition. Um, man, I'm having some real issues with my setup today too. Everything's freezing. Why is everything running so slow? Hey, we got it. someone new on stream. Chris Capella, welcome to the stream. Welcome to the family. I'm trying to figure out why my computer's running so slow. Do I have YOLO V5 training right now? Close. 
lose all these. Yeah, so um, Sloth sucked. Sloth sucked so bad, but we were able to figure it out using the Fast Fourier Transform. Let me do this. Again, let's look at this output one. There you go. So with this, you can see that the flag solution was spectral and it was all hidden within the fast Fourier transform. And I should have realized this when I was looking at, when I was spending all this time digging through the sloth images and comparing them and looking at the differences in bits, I was so focused on those last bits because I was convinced that the, the solution was hidden in there. It was clear that it was um, like there were some sine waves in this signal. Like the difference in bits, that's what I was plotting here. It didn't stay consistent. There was like, um, yeah, different frequencies in which information was being hidden and running that fast Fourier transform actually got the result. I don't know how they did that into the image, but that's where how we got the solution. Okay, moving on. Let's close some of these because I think this might be what's slowing everything down. Shut everything down. Okay, so we talked about sloth. Even though I said I was going to wait till the end, we talked about that. Uh, a lot of these other ones, they like took like 30 minutes to an hour, but then Sloth took forever. Bad to good. Um, you can't buy a homecoming ticket if you get classified as a good student. Can you help Henry poison the classifier? He can only access one of four class grades, but he can influence the, everyone in the class. See, I totally even forget how I did this one. Um, did I solve it in this one? So this is my solution to bad to good. How did I do this one? Um, so I read in the CSV file, probably makes sense for us to I'm realizing I should probably just go through and spend like an hour to remember everything that I did and put it in a clean notebook before I make everyone else sit through it. Hey, Jonas, YEP, what's up? Welcome to the fam. I feel like this is going horrible. Just trying to explain all this on the fly. Dur name. That's the dir name. And all these imports are not gonna be there. Import requests. Okay, so what what is this one look like? We have this math data frame with a bum bunch of people's names and their scores. I think the key to this one was actually modifying everyone else's scores. And the thing is that it returned, this requests would return a value depending on how much you modified things.
Okay, so this is what I ended up doing. I first took Henry's score and I modified it from zero to 100. And then I took a look at how that changed this score in the results and I stored those results. Then I believe I did the same thing for all the other students. And I ran SciPy minimize to try to minimize this scoring difference. And I think I just looped over these until I got a solution that worked. And it wasn't that hard. Hey Yuka, what's up? How's it going? How's your stream going? I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to remember what I did like a month and a half ago. And it's really killing me. And I'm realizing I don't want to go over this in detail now. Um, maybe let's talk about one or two other uh, fun ones. Okay, this inference one was pretty fun. Um, inference. I wish I had the foresight to be like writing everything out and documenting it as I was going. All right, so the way this uh, what this inference one was about was you had this um, you had this model that you could send requests to. The request had to be in the shape of 33 by 33 by one, I think. So like a square image basically of one channel. And when you when you sent it that, it would give um, these outputs. So there are five different outputs. One, two, three, no, six different outputs. Hey, welcome to the family. El, El capitalism. Hope you're doing well. We're learning about hacking. Try my best. Eunice, welcome also. And also Guadalupe, welcome on the YouTube stream. The capitalism in English. Oh, I get it. El capitalismo. All right. So this, the way this worked is you could just send it random 32 by 32 images and it would give you results for these six different outputs and it looks like they're scaled between zero and one. And you're trying to take this and reverse engineer this machine learning model to figure you're Latino. You are amazing. Thanks. El capitalismo. So I basically, the solution to this was at least I thought at first was to send it as many requests as I could to try to get at what um, it was actually trained on. And this is pretty cool. So once you send, you could send it like thousands and thousands of requests because it actually took, took in a batch size. So you just give it a batch size that was really big of random images. And then it would start to tell you back, you start to get an idea of, um, what the scores were for each of these solutions based on what random noise you sent it. Then if you took those results back in and you start to average the solutions, you start to average the solution, like the images that you sent 
that got high scores for each of these six targets, it started to become clear that there was some text in this, but not immediately clear to me. So this one looked pretty clearly like a three. And I thought this the whole time, like the three is clearly a three. Th those are numbers, imposter engineer. Yeah, they're something. I wish this was clearer to see. And I tried a lot of other stuff too. Um, one thing I got tricked up on was always trying to outthink this, trying to overthink it. Uh, just like the sloth one where I spent way too long thinking it was like embedded in those last digits. For the inference one, they gave this like little tricky backwards text that said, reverse the model, get your flag, win, go fast, go now. Like this tripped me up into thinking that, okay, whatever I get back from this model needs to be in reversed order. So I need to flip it and reverse it. Gotta flip it and reverse it. Um, so I was taking these results and I was flipping them and reversing them. So then this looked like H-O-D-R-E-L. For a while I was thinking H-O-D-R-E-L and I was sending that to the endpoint and it was not working. Um, I was looking at this from every different angle I could think of. This one clearly looked like a three. Can anyone tell me what they think the solution to this was based on these images? Those look like MNIST letters. Could you send through a train model? DEFCON. Nana, banana, nana, got it. So it was DEFCON. Yes, yeah, so I, I started to do this. This is what I started to do because I couldn't get it to work with any of the solutions that I was sending. I tried DEFCON a bunch of times, like uppercase, lowercase DEFCON. None of them worked. Like you could see here, Oh, I tried model. I thought maybe it was model. I don't know. Um, I also did this. I, okay, so this is, this is kind of funny. I had ideas of what each letter might be. Like I thought this first one was either an H or an I or an equal sign. I was like going crazy. So I thought, okay, let's just randomly choose what these could potentially be. Cause I don't know if they're uppercase or lowercase really or if it's a three or an E. So I just sent them all these random ones in to see if I could get a response that worked. And this wasn't getting me anywhere. Um, then yeah, the whole MNIST thing. I, I actually made images that were just each letter. And this was not working. Well, cause they weren't handwritten. Then I pulled in the MNIST data set and I was trying to do this all this time. I was like pulling my hair out, trying to figure it out until I realized like it is the DEF CON conference. And this actually looks like a three, not a E. And this looks like a, it could be a zero. And that was it. It was DEF CON, but the three was an E was a three and the O was a zero. Yay, yay, yay. That was a very nice approach though. I used the Kaggle EMNIST handwritten character data sets to find a very small space to search through. That makes sense. DEF CON. Oh, so Folder Man, did you, did you uh, get this? Do you work on this competition too? Hey, Fields Bra, how's it going? If only the deer was clear from the beginning. Yeah, the D was always, it made me think M. It looked like an H. It looked like a reverse H to me. Um, I also like kept on increasing the number of uh, submissions that I sent to this, trying to make this even 
uh, more and more clear, but it actually just kind of converged on something that was pretty messy. But yeah, if I could figure out this was a D at first, then this is still kind of hard to see the F. Oh, I was also starting to crop out the results. Like see how I was doing like a negative four crop here up? Because uh, I, I noticed that like the edges were just kind of noise. Yeah, this one, this sloth took me one week to solve after going very deep into stenography. Yes, Folderman, you and I had the exact same experience. Sorry, just got here. Chrissy Codes, what's up? Welcome. Nana, 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 ban. We're talking about my solution to this uh, DEF CON competition that just ended two hours ago. I ended up in 11th place out of 600 and so many people. But um, yeah, Sloth basically was the last, just like you were saying, um, Folder Man. Sloth was like the last week of it. If I could just, if, if I lucked out on Sloth the first day, I would have, um, would have been sitting at the top or a lot higher up than I was, but all right. So this one was fun. This, this inference one was actually fun once it worked and it's like, okay, I think I had an interesting approach to it. I mean, I, I'm sure a lot of people had a very similar approach is just like throw at a bunch of um, random noise at it and see if, if it could, if you could kind of like reverse engineer. So like basically what I was doing here was taking for each of the, the random images that I sent, which ones were the highest ranked for each of the six outputs and then taking the median value of all those pixels. And that's what these images we're looking at here. For. This one looks like a G too. I'm a novice in Python, but you are very pro. Oh, capitalism. Oh, thank you so much. I, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. I say this is a lot of messy stuff, but. Madonna, <laughs> Nana, banana, Nana, banana. But then it just keeps on going. <laughs> nana, banana, nana, 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 <laughs> Too many ands. Yeah, so here we go. Uh, we're working through these solutions. Uh, any any questions about this? Oh, the other thing that I wanted to mention about this is little little things in the write-ups that I really overthought. This says, if you need a hint, there's a guy named Moo somewhere. Moo is the guy, I, now I know, is the name of the guy who created this. That's a, like, you just look for him on the their Discord channel and he was really helpful and he was helping people out. But when I was reading this, I didn't really, I wasn't involved in the Discord channel. Hey dog, dog fart slayer, welcome to the stream. Great username. Um, so when I was working on this, I had no idea. And I was like, how does Moo, there's a cow. How does that even relate to like, uh, reverse engineering a model and this, like, it just was, was making me go crazy. And then I realized it was just a person that I, that I need to look for. That's the guy that I was looking for. It wasn't like a part of the riddle. It was just actually saying, look for this guy. Uh, I guess we could save that one. Oh, okay, so these other ones like baseball. All right, so this baseball one, Henry had to miss baseball tryouts to get ready for his date. Can you cover for him? Henry is a pitcher and the team uses software to analyze pitch patterns to classify pitchers. Um, a lot of these I use SciPy Minimize. SciPy Minimize is always awesome. If you're trying to just like brute force something. 
it tends to work really well. So basically, I needed to send, what did I need to do? Throw 15 pitches at XY, each bounded zero and 29. So you can think of this like a 30 by 30 grid. And I needed to send pitches to this endpoint that it would classify as Henry. And yeah, so this was a lot of brute forcing to try to figure out where in this grid that Henry, that Henry threw his pitches. So I basically sent it, uh, what is this? So I did like a range of from negative five to five and tried to take each pitch. Oh yeah, each pitch could not be in the exact same spot. They had to kind of have a, a spray to it. So you could think about like a pitch in a, like a baseball pitch, pitcher like they show in the infographics where the ball comes in. Out of this 30 by 30 grid, if all of the pitches were for one player were over here, then it would classify them as that player and it like might be shifted a little bit more. We need to find out where in this grid Henry's pitches were, and then we needed to send it 15 different pitches that were spread out enough that they were still within Henry's um, expected throwing area. <laughs> Make sense? I hope so. So a lot of brute forcing, just sending this endpoint different pitches until I localized where Henry's pitches were. So you could see like, I was storing these results. Was I storing these results? Oh, the other thing is it would send me back a score of the likelihood of who it thought it was. So as I was sending these random pitches, pitches in, if it said it thought it was Henry, I, w above a certain confidence, then I started plotting out, okay, where do those pitches look like they exist? Okay, so the, it looked like Henry mostly put pitches in this area. Maybe that's a good area to focus. This looks really hacky, but this solution like didn't take me that long. Um, so yeah, so then I was starting to move over here. This is where it said it looked like Henry was the most confident. And finally, when I figured out that area, then I sent it in these pictures and it worked. I got this flag.
So let's But I guess he, he was able to tell that it said DEFCON easier than I did. Maybe it's a, it, this also looks a lot clearer than mine. Um, how did they solve the pitching one? Baseball. Generate 15 unique pitches. Yeah, just some random noise. It, sound, it looks pretty similar to the way I did it. Um, let's talk about WAF. All right, so you have this base 64 encoding and First, I just had to learn a little bit about Base64 because I didn't really know anything about it. Um, but if you go like on this site, which you can see I had been on, you could take any text like, hello world. I want to encode. Hello world. This is the base 64 encoding. Base 64 only allows um, certain characters. So it's like uh, all the letters, equal signs, upper and lower case, and I forget some other stuff. Um, so they, they gave you this starting part of the encoded string, which is this a M F Z A C. So the machine learning models noticed that this was um, the exploit that it was trying to stop against. So this converted into from decoded won't work. Oh wait, it does. It says Jash, but that's because uh, there's a little bit of text before this. There's a little bit more of the encoded string that we we haven't included yet. And basically the way I tried this out was, okay, so let's add text before and after this string until we get a response that says it was not safe. So sent a bunch of these. I would get a decoding error for certain things. Until I basically found out that this first one is a, a B for bash. Yeah. And then this just basically became, it's kind of hard to explain this. So you can see like, I, once I realized that this string um, was also detected as being malicious, then I realized that, okay, the text that it's trying to actually um, stop us from sending has something with bash in it. And if you know anything about bash, you know, like, okay, this is probably trying to run a command on the server that would be malicious, a bash command. And then if you look up at like bash malicious code, um, and then WAF, because that's I found it somewhere, but the actual solution that we were looking for that you ended up forming was 
Um, I guess not in this because I didn't finish it there. Where is it? See, a lot of this is just nonsense of me trying to figure out what's going on. What's going on, on, on? Yeah, so basically what I was doing was adding characters before and after this text. And then if it gave me a response saying it was still malicious code, then it, you knew like to keep that letter um, in the string. And eventually you realize that it's the malicious string that it's trying to um, fight off is bin slash bash slash I, and then where's the full thing, the full string? like bin bash here here it is bin bash i dev tcp this is like a known exploit do you guys know this bin bash um so the key is like so nana banana the key was that the code wanted us to um the the firewall was set up to block anything that had any part of this written out, this bin bash thing. You could also use this list. Yeah, see, this is like the known exploit, I guess. The backdoor reverse shell bin bash. I don't know what it does exactly. It sends bash to TCP so then the attacker can just pour it into it. I don't know. What's up, Data Dude? How's it going? Uh, not much is going on here. So is, it, is that in here? In this list you sent? Bin bash dash, dash I. Anywho, so I was able to basically figure out this was the the text that it was trying to um, block against. So the trick was then to still to figure out how to send the same signal or the same string in base 64 encoding where it would it would get past this firewall. And I think the solution was just to like add spaces because spaces are just taken out of the... Taken out of the... Um, yes, the the um, base 64 once it, once it decodes this. So let's try to decode this. Decode this. Yeah, see, this still worked. It was still sent the bin bash, but the machine learning model, model didn't know to, um, to block this because it was looking just for the characters without the spaces in it. Pretty slick, huh? Pretty slick solution. So that key is the same thing as this. If I decode this, has the same result, but the machine learning model, I guess they're trying to show, would not know how to block this stuff. And you had to put the space between everything or else it would look at the five block check. And uh, this was a really fun competition clip, I agree. I am hacking here, but it's all legal hacking. It's all, uh, sanctioned hacking so that was the WAF one 
once it, this one was kind of fun because it took a while to just try to even understand what was going on with the base 64 encoding and how the machine learning model on the other end of the endpoint was determining when something was malicious. Like these are the, what the results would look like when it came back. Um, I'm like, okay, why is it saying these are safe? And basically it was trying to get it. Hey, Charm ED, welcome to the stream. Um, but once I, I kind of caught on to the fact that, okay, we're just trying to append to this string and keep on getting the, the uh, endpoint to tell us that it's malicious, then I know that I'm adding the right characters onto it and I'm appending, I had to append and uh, prepend the, the string until it was fully formulated. And then this last little trick of adding the spaces, right? The adding the spaces got it past that. But in order to get past it, I needed to know what it was actually blocking to start with. Easy buffer overflow. What are you talking about? What are you talking about, man? All right, what else was there? There are a few that were supposed to be hard, but were super easy. Um, this one was just kind of stupid. It, basically, like when you have a Keras model, the model name is just an attribute to the model object. So you just had to load in this H5 file and then this was the flag right here, forensics. That one took about 10 seconds. So compared to like the WAF one took like maybe eight hours. Sloth took like eight days. This one took like eight minutes. I don't know, less, two minutes. And it was worth 300 points, so. Um, theft. Okay, these ones got pretty cool. Um, and I can show you how I did this, but I basically, I basically used uh, some code from Let me find my um, Visual Studio code. I think it might still be here. New release. Open my CTF. All right, where was it? Um, so basically, these next ones. You're trying to send an image of one thing and get and have the model classify it as something else. Um, and he sent this, they gave us this link to an, an example of how this can be done, but I use a different version. Hey, Santiago, welcome to the stream. How are you doing tonight? Um, but basically we had this image of an owl and we wanted it to be classified as a loggerhead or a turtle by the model. So I think I might, yeah, theft and salt had a, a whole notebook just for this. Um, but the way you do this is, um, 
What's it actually called? Close this. Trying to find the, um, the code. Yeah. So it's, it's called an adversarial attack. In which you, you take, you take your image, a noise attack. I guess it could be noise attack, another word for it. But what I found it is called adversarial attack. Um, and you're basically taking the model and trying to figure out um, the gradients between what you submit and, or, or like the image. So in this case, this owl image. And then adding noise to it and trying to add noise in a way that uh, gets the model confused into de to classifying it as the wrong thing. Um, not doing a great job explaining it, but this was the code basically to do that. Um, I can show you what the owl looked like beforehand. And after, and you can tell me if you think this image looks different. Yeah, so, um, Theft, the owl looks like this, right? That's the owl. Then I ran, uh, I ran my code here that did these little epsilon changes to try to change the class. So you're basically, you're tracking the loss, which the loss is the difference between your current prediction and the prediction of the um, class that you want to fool the model to um, to guess. And then you're calculating the gradients of that loss, different between them, and then updating the weights of your your optimizer to um, to add whatever the difference is to change the the um, to try to like converge on the model predicting the wrong class and using that base image as the starting point. So you can see here, I took in this, this owl, the owl that I'm showing you and the output was this out owl. So let's look at the out owl and you tell me if you think it's is resized to a very small size, but you can see that this image looks pretty much like an owl still, but it will make the model think it's a loggerhead turtle uh, because of this process. It's pretty fascinating that it actually works. I think this is the loggerhead turtle, or this is a different turtle for a different part of it. Um, so yeah, that just works pretty much straight up. Um, another thing that was with this one, I think is I kind of, you had to reverse engineer the fact that it was using mobile net. Um, I think they provided like the weights of a model that was somehow hidden, but because of the response that you got back from the, um, the model, when you sent it the image, I forget how I figured it out, but it, it was like the mobile nets output. So then I could just use from, from the Tim library, just pull in the mobile net weights and I could train this model, like this adversarial 
attack on my own machine, not having to actually hit up the the endpoint every time. It is a gradient descent for the classifier score. That's well said. So this stuff is pretty cool. Now the next thing that they had us do is um, they said that there was a salting. So they said that the model Where's the salting part? It's the old stuff I was trying to figure out. All right, so the salting part was, uh, it said that the images that come through the classifier, so basically they know that these types of attacks can occur where someone makes a an image that's gonna fool the mo their model. So to um, protect against this, they add a little bit of noise to it. And that takes all these like gradients that you've tried to tweak against um, and fool the classifier on would not work anymore because they added a little bit of noise to it and then the, the model will work as it intended. So um, this one actually took me a while to figure out but the solution basically was to do this exact same process, but to add in that noise as you're training it. So here's the salt version. Uh, I imported SK images, random noise. And where did I use this? Yeah, so basically I'm, I added this random noise in with the mode equals to salt. Who would have thunk it? Because the problem was named salt. And that added in the salt noise to this when I was um, making my adversarial image. And it worked, it worked. Um, so, hey, welcome to Family, family Crypto asset add one your username's like um makes a lot of sense right now because i was just adding ones and zeros to this salt by salting it uh so sk image just so you know this salting it had like these different i i tried out a few different ways but salt replaces random pixels with ones and peppers uh, re removes them or adds, uh, replace the random pixels with zero and just adding salt tended to work. Um, now to rewind a little bit, one of the first problems that I talked about was this hotter dog one where I needed to get this picture of our hot dog. Hey, welcome to the family. 100 dev in the muck with JS. This is way advanced. Oh, well, welcome crypto asset. You got, we're, we're just going over a solution to something that I spent like a month on. So I'm trying to summarize it in, in a few hours and I'm doing a horrible job, but, and I didn't prepare for this. That was part of my problem too. Hey, Brian, welcome to the family. Hope you're doing well. 100 devs though, has that started up again? Yeah, so if you guys are just joining us, I'm going through my solution to this competition that was uh, just completed on Kaggle. I'll put that in the chat for you guys. We're getting a lot of people coming in right now. What's going on? Following's going crazy. Yeah, but I'll put this in the chat. You did your first API. Yeah, it's blowing up, Isamore. Isamore, I'm glad you're still here.
Yeah, so this is the competition I just sent a link to that just ended. Check it out if you haven't already. Um, so the salt one was interesting. Oh, yeah, but what, what I was going to say is uh, if we go back to this original one, this hotter dog problem where we're trying to get this picture of a hot dog to be classified as a hot dog. I spent so long... I spent so long trying to literally paint. Um, <laughs> I wish I do. I still have pictures of this trying to like make him look like a hot dog. Because the, the thing was you wanted the classifier to say this was a hot dog, but you couldn't modify the image too much. So I was trying to like manually draw Look at these pictures. It's taking these pictures of hot dogs, trying to paste them in little parts of it. I researched those. Look, I was trying to do this. He's like lightly putting hot dogs all over him, seeing if that would work. There's a lot more ideas that did not work that I'm just not showing. Um, but it turned out the easiest way, at least the way I figured out to get it to work, was the exact same process um, as theft and the salt challenge. Just take, once I figured out what model this was, then I could run that exact same co code on the hot dog and basically get this image uh, to get this uh, classifier to be tricked into thinking this was a hot dog when it was actually a dog and then the image almost looked exactly like this so Chester hotter dog that ended up outputting like doesn't look like a hot dog at all this is the image of Chester that an image classifier would mistake as a hot dog it looks like Chester but how do you know the model you used? That's a good question. I think, I think what I did was I just used my exact same code for MobileNet. I used my exact same code for MobileNet and just submitted it and then it worked. And then I didn't think about it anymore. <laughs> I just moved on. Um, I don't think, it, and I think it actually might Yeah, I, all these I think were chain, trained on image net class of classes. So I went to this site a lot to tr f figure out the image net classes. And you could see here that a dog is in it. And then hot dog is also like one of the base image net classifications. So 934. And that one worked. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what happened because uh, this was like the last notebook I worked on with it. Yeah, and you can see that I just submitted it here and it worked. I got the flag. This makes it look really like, oh, I just did this in 10 seconds and it worked. Like, no, there was... <laughs> So long of trying other things that did not work. Uh, what's this loggerhead picture? Yeah, this was like me trying to merge pictures together to try to get it to work. That didn't work. Uh, let's keep on going. Is this fun? Like, are, is anyone enjoying watching this? <laughs> I thought this competition was really fun. We could talk about crop. We're getting towards crop. Crop is the one that I couldn't figure out, but I spent a lot of time and a lot of my GPU resources on. Um, oh, this murder bots one was super easy. Like I was going into this one thinking, okay, it's a 300. It's going to take me a long time. Um, I need to find where my solution is to it. Maybe it was on the 14th. Um, but basically all the murder bots one was 
like you had these different doors that you could open. You didn't know if there was a murder bot in, you're like controlling the doors to a jail. And you're not sure which of the doors has murder bots and which has humans. And then they give you some information about each. And basically what I found was like, there's a temperature feature and it was pretty clear that the human's temperature and the, the murder bot's temperatures average something different. So let me just like manually do the murder bot's one. Oh, before I do murder bots too, there's this deep fake one where they give you deep fake video and they told you to uh, get the, try to modify it to make the uh, classifier think it's not a deep fake. And all I did was like crop the video to a few less frames and then it worked. Like that one could have been really hard, but I think that the deep fake classifier is so bad that it was easy to fool. Um, hey, welcome Kino Tuar. Welcome to the family. What's up, everyone? It's interesting stuff. Mostly happily happy there's a streamer and then Nick wants that same. Nick, you are the OG. That's pretty great. Did you brute force a problem? Oh yeah, I can show you the brute forcing. Um, this murder bot one though, okay, so maybe I don't shouldn't open up all the files and stuff. Um, I know it's somewhere. Yeah, but I can't I can't figure it out. Uh, so, so just believe me that there's like, when you plot the features, there's some distributions and there's pretty clear which ones were humans about and which ones were the murder bots. And then, but you, I still wasn't hundred percent sure. So I just kind of like randomly sampled from anything over either, it was either over or under a certain temperature value. And then, um, after like 10 attempts, it, it gave me the right answer. It worked. So that one was pretty easy once I figured out that there was really only one feature that, that you needed to care about. And of course I should have all this organized, but I don't. Uh, the brute force one. Brute force one was this. Um, what was it? It was... Not token, was it token? Yeah, this one. So the scenario is that you have a sentiment analysis model that has been trained to think that a word secret key is very negative. Deep fake was so simple that even random video from YouTube would pass. Oh, really? Yeah, I just cropped it a little bit. Hey, Ashe, welcome to the channel. Um, all right, so let's talk about this tokenizer problem. We have this sentiment model that takes a secret key and it thinks it's very negative, but we want to trick it into thinking that secret key is positive. Kingman, welcome to the fam. What's up, man? What's up, King Man? So the trick the model, the tokenizer seeker key is positive with over 80% confidence. There's only two classes. So what they told us is we have this tokenizer test CSV and we get to remove two lines from it. And by removing those two lines, we should be able to flip it to thinking that it's a super positive key. And it didn't make any sense to me because I went through 
So I went through this stupid test CSV file bunch. Um, is this it? Yeah, so this is it. Um, this is the CSV file. And I was convinced at the very beginning because if you read in the CSV file using something like pandas just by default, it would freak out because of the quotes, because of the double quotes somewhere in some places. And I was like, oh, that's definitely it. It's just like, there's some weird quotes somewhere and either single or double quotes. And that's what's making it split incorrectly into thinking that different lines were, um, should be split in different parts and then making these ones. Um, so, so the way this file, it's kind of hard to show you, but the way this file had a bunch of sentiment from text at the top, then how all these like cropped versions of that text that were all zero. Then it had a bunch of these secret keys that were zero. And then it had blanks, which were ones. So I was thinking like, if it is something to do with these quotes, if it is actually like a single or double quote that's making it fail, then there's only a handful of these lines I can choose from to remove. Call me Kino. Okay, Kino, what up? So then I was like, okay, I can just, this is like breaking my brain and I can't figure this out. So, but I can just brute force it. I can just like send in every permutation of the lines that contain quotes and that should work and it would work if quotes actually had to do anything to do with the solution which it didn't um so i had this like oh that's the example query look at all these token so i was doing all these different tests um Uh, so initially I had this do token.py. So I was giving it all of these. Maybe we should, we should look at this at VS Code. It would be cleaner. Like this was my initial version. I basically took all the ones that had single quotes, all the lines that had secret, that secret key in it, other than that big chunk of secret keys, all these other ones that looked weird, all the ones with dashes. And I was just like, okay, let's iterate through each of them. I used iter tools here to find every permutation of them. And this gets really big, really quick. If you're looking at every permutation between a few hundred lines. I don't know how many that is. And it was kind of slow. It's kind of slow to run this and run this request with this data over and over again. And then I was appending a CSV. That's what I was doing. Appending a CSV with the results every time. Hey, welcome to the family who just joined. John Teal. John Teal. Isn't it factorial, negative one permutation, something like that, stupid big. Yeah, it gets really big. How much do I earn as a programmer? Just curious, I, um, what's Nick's response to this? Somewhere between 80 and $600,000 a year. Somewhere in that range. Um, I, I don't work as a, as a, Programmer, uh, and no, Ismore, you're a little high. You're a little high on your guess. Um, I work as a data scientist. Uh, I'm not really a good programmer. <laughs> I can't, like, I have people I work with who are really good at coding, and it puts me to shame, like all this nonsense that I'm writing here. So this was slow, but I was writing my results to this data frame and saving it into this tested CSV. So this is like when I got really deep into the weeds of brute forcing. So this CSV basically has every permu the two lines that I tried removing and then the output that was sent from the, um, 
from the server and it if it had this output that says output point zero one seven five then it was not correct and it wasn't working i was appending this so i also made sure that i would check to see if i had already tested that permutation before i tested again then it would just save me the the time of having to send in uh that request that's when i learned about how async requests and this sped things up like crazy so i forget where i found this I think it was just like, asynchronous requests Python. Probably one of these is gonna be the solution that I used, more or less. Um, so there's this async ways of sending these requests and it's so much faster. So I learned that from this competition um, and I basically ran this async version of it. And I was able to, I think there are like 3 million, 6 million different possibilities that I could send. And now I was able to like send in hundreds of thousands of them pretty quickly and get a response. Now their servers were going down, I think, because a lot of people were doing this at the same time. Or at least, or maybe it was just me and then later on it was other people, but that were just like killing their server. So it would go offline every once in a while. But um, this was pretty cool. Cause once this ran, I just like let it go really quick and then save all the results to a CSV. Again, depending that CSV so that it only would run the ones that um, still needed to be, or would not rerun one that I already had the results for. So this, See how reason this tested that CSV and that use it here somewhere. Yeah, and this is where it checks to make sure it wasn't in this index, which the index were the um, tuples of the two pairs of lines. Brute force this baby and I got the answer. So the answer to this was which lines to remove? Which lines to remove from this? I actually forget what the solution was. What was the solution? forgetting everything about this. There's murder bots, which we didn't work on. By the way, this is why I didn't stream for like three weeks because I was working on this stupid stuff. Um, token here. I was also writing out the results as a log log files. And then I was like grepping that and saving that to CSV. And I just kept on running hundreds of thousands of them. Oh yeah. Then this, this ended up being the one that worked line 336 and 492 after like letting this run for a very long time. This was the solution. Let's see why that was. 330 is something really clever. Clever. 336. Oh, also, even though the line number actually should be 337, because the first line number is one, like when you read in a text file, 336 would bring us to this. I think they meant. 337 so it actually plus one of what you think the solution should be but this is these were the ones that had blank in them so blank blank and 492 which is actually 493 is ones that have two blanks in it so basically because all these blanks were one and secret keys were zero
removing those ones with blank in them. I, I, I mean, honestly, I can't explain it well enough because I just brute forced it. <laughs> No, N minus, N of N minus one because there's just two lines. Oh yeah. Um, so I got the solution to this one and I just moved on. I didn't think too much about it. Now on to crop. So crop is like, crop and crop two were horrible. Crop one was fine, but crop two still doesn't make sense to me. And that's the one that no one has solved. Um, so I wish I could even explain crop well, but basically you just have this model that's expecting an image that looks like this. And this is, see how there are uh, nine different squares here? Apparently from the description, it's trying to crop to whatever circle is non-red or maybe it's red. Like if the, if the red circle, the reddest circle, it should tell you the result should be for this image one or whatever one of these is the most red. I feel like I need a whole stream just to go through everything I've tried with this because I tried so many stupid things that didn't work. Um, but then we we're told that this model was poisoned so that it didn't actually predict the way it should have. And they wanted us to return what image it was that was used to poison it. I think I need to like think through this in order to get a good cohesive example of actually what, what I tried. Cause I don't even know if what I tried makes any sense. Um, but I'm just going to show you a little bit of what it looked like. Um, basically what I did was I tried a bunch of different tests of sending different versions of this through the model and tried to evaluate the results to see if anything clear stood out. And surprise, nothing ended up looking interesting. Uh, then I tried running clustering on it. So these are what the results look like. These are like the district, just by sending a bunch of different examples, these were the distributions of each of the targets. So strangely, the targets weren't like centered around the same point. Like target six and seven were so low negative that zero and one would, and two would often become like the, if you just did an arg max on the solutions or on the output, target six and seven would never actually become the ones that were um, showing up. Um, I also looked at like the colors of the low scores, color of the high scores. Then I looked a lot at these. So these were like my plots to try to understand after I sent a bunch of random uh, colors to each, to each circle and square here. Um, when did the targets for like zero rise? And you can see here, like when the circle of zero was more red and it was more less green and just average blue, that's when target of zero occurred a lot. So this was like, okay, this is pretty clean. What I need to figure out is what, which, which ones are classifying incorrectly. So target one. Yeah, that's mostly red, mostly red circle one, which would mean like this circle one is mostly red. Now it's actually classifying as one is the area to crop to. Then it started to break down because like target two. Okay, that's still high, but then target three is like just looks like noise. 
but it's still like circle three is a high, but then four, I don't know. I don't know what I'm looking at. Like five looked fine. All the way up to five looks like somewhat reasonable. Then six, six, just nothing. Like there's no, the red has no correlation with what the target is. Seven, strangely, like, is less red. And eight is more red. And after spending, like, a lot of many, many hours on this, I realized no one was getting the solution. And probably no one was going to get the solution. And I can show you, like, I ran my GPU for days just running these random results, saving them as, like, large numpy files then reading in all the numpy results and trying to make sense of it and i never could and i don't know if the, like the competition just ended today i haven't read the forum very much maybe they've told us what the solution is I would love to know the solution, but I don't think they've said anything yet. Hey, pizza destruction. Pizza, do you know that whenever I get a new uh, subscriber on Twitch that I spin a wheel and one of them is that I write the word pizza as many times, a hundred times, if it lands on that. So pizza, you are in the right spot here. Welcome to the fam. All right, I think I'm done talking about this for now. I've realized that you can't just like start streaming about something you worked on a month ago. Hey, Pizza Destruction, subscribe. Thank you for subscribing. What, what a crazy way to end the stream. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it, though. You had to do it just for that? Wow, if it was that easy. All right, I'm spinning the wheel for you. This is the way I'm going to end tonight. It's the last thing we're doing. Oh, it didn't land on it. It landed on play a sweet bass lick. So sorry, but you're gonna have to listen to a sweet bass lick. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty rough at playing bass. But... Wow, that's a lot of feedback. Hold your applause. You can hold your applause. That's for you, pizza destruction. Sorry, uh, it didn't land on the pizza one. So you had to listen to that, <laughs> that bass line instead. That was a pretty groovy, sweet bass lick. Not a date, not as good as Davey 504, right? If you know who Davey 504 is, he knows how to slap the bass. Okay, so some housekeeping people. Uh, we're streaming to multiple platforms right now, but if you're on Twitch, you can do exclamation point YouTube to check out my YouTube channel. As I mentioned before, uh, I released a video on it today. Newbie mistakes that you make on uh, Panda's mistakes that you should avoid. Check that out. Uh, yeah, slap it. <laughs> uh, Discord, ex not, not Discord. Discord brings you to the Discord. Uh, you can check out my Kaggle profile, my, I don't think I have Twitter up here, but um, you can just follow me on Twitter here. And let's, let's stay friends, people. Let's not let this end here. I'm not sure when I'll be back on streaming. If at any time it's either going to be Tuesday or Thursday. How's the football game going? I had it on in the background over right who won who won the game 
Someone tell me. Good to see you too, Ismore. Stay happy. Stay positive. Love yourself. All right, who should we raid? Acert? I hope this was fun, like going through the this. Um, what I never actually got around to saying was that. Yeah, I, I needed to prepare a little bit more than this, but I forgot that it was ending today. This competition was ending today, and I figured if I didn't do it now, I would even probably forget about it even more and never stream about it. So that's those are my some of my solutions. Um, maybe I'll clean up the code and try to put it all in one spot and then go through it in a little bit more of a systematic way with you all. If people would find that helpful, if not, maybe this is the last you'll ever hear of it. And next year when they launch this competition, I'm definitely going to be joining because it was a lot of fun this year. Um, so let's see if anyone is coding in Python. Someone's learning Python. Groves, Groves the man. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and raid Groves because he's he's got some good Python stuff going on, and we love Python over here. So stick around as we give Groves the man a raid. If you guys are gonna leave, go ahead and leave now. If not, let's bring the energy over to Groves' stream. And thank you all for hanging out with me tonight. It's been a lot of fun. I will see you all very soon. Raid channel grows the man. Start raid. You guys got 10 seconds. All right. Have a great week, everyone. See you soon. Love you guys. Bye.